Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. Um, this video is about the Aquarius full moon. Now, um, if you are new to my channel, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer, and I work with traditional and fixed star cosmic galactic astrology to pull together um, some insight really into the energies of some of these bigger astrological events that we are navigating. And um, I have got a website as I do offer readings. So if you're interested in your starseed lineage or your soul purpose um, or, you know, what's coming up for you over the following year, um, please do check out my website, which is spiralbright.co.uk. And the other thing I wanted to say, I've had a couple of comments um, from people that have watched my channel asking if I can share the charts as I'm talking about them. So I'm going to attempt to do that today and bear with me. I will do some editing afterwards, um, but hopefully, you know, having that visual may help as well as I talk through some of the energies. So <clears throat> Without further ado, um, this full moon in Aquarius is, I know I've said it before, it's a biggie. It's very powerful. There is a lot going on. So this video is likely to be slightly longer than normal. Um, what we are working with is the moon in Aquarius at 27 degrees, 15 minutes, opposing the sun at exactly the same point in Leo in opposition. And this is taking place on the 19th of August at 7.25 p.m. in the UK. And, you know, as with every full moon, it is always a time of completion. It's the ending of the lunar cycle. So it's always a good opportunity to let go of things, for things to come to their natural completion an ending it's a release point and there's quite a few um sort of numbers in the chart that also support this because we are working with a lot of the number nine energy in the chart which i will um sort of highlight when i start sharing my screen but the number nine is the final number in the sequence from one to nine so when we get to the nine we are sort of getting ready to complete something in order to move forward and come back to the number one again. So um, there's a lot of endings around with this full moon. Um, there is also um, a lot of planets in the later degrees in the third deacon of each of their signs. And when we're working with the third deacon, which is 20 to 29 degrees of a sign, you know, we are in the more spiritual um, expression of that sign. So, again, that is something to bear in mind. And, you know, overall, there is a lot of air in this chart, but there is also a lot of fire. And I don't need to um, explain in too much detail what happens when we have a lot of air and a fire is blazing um, already quite strongly. So, um, yeah, to say it's uh, there's a lot going on and it's quite powerful, quite potent um, and quite hot, I think is probably, you know, a fair assumption. But before I share the chart, just to talk briefly about the energy of Aquarius as an Aquarian sun, this is very much my sort of territory. And um, Aquarius is the 11th sign of the zodiac. So, um, you know, we are in the realm of the collective of humanity when we're working with Aquarius and, you know, social groups and um, sort of working with and finding your tribe comes through Aquarius and um, Aquarian energy is very, very fixated on freedom um, and of also sort of going against the status quo of being quite unconventional. And often, you know, Aquarius can be described as very weird, very wacky and um, very left field, very maverick. But it's because Aquarius doesn't want to conform, doesn't want to go along with what everyone else is doing unless it is the right choice. So it's not a case that Aquarius is going to sort of rock the boat and defy convention for the sake of it. Um, Aquarius energy is very much about bringing in sort of um, genius ideas and um, something that is new to the table, often ideas that seem very futuristic because, you know, they are so 
unexpected. Um, but, you know, this is quite revolutionary, quite rebellious energy at De Himes, depending on how you look at it. Now, Aquarius is fixed air. So there is a real focus on the mind, on the head, on thinking, on ideas, um, which opposes Leo, where the sun is currently and where the sun is going to be, where Leo is very much of the heart based. Leo is a fire sign. Um, so Leo is the heart consciousness. And again, I will talk about that in more detail shortly. But Aquarius needs space. Aquarius can be quite detached. It's come across as quite aloof because, you know, it's all about the head and the heart as opposed, sorry, the head and the mind as opposed to heart and emotions. Um, but Aquarius Aquarius is also very much about the waves of change and also about information and intellect and understanding and sharing that wisdom that, you know, may be um, unconventional, unexpected, break the mould um, to quite a large extent. But again, this is wisdom that is for the greater good because Aquarius really has humanity's best interests at heart. Um, so, you know, we're talking about progressive energy. We're talking about um, futuristic energy. We're also talking music to my ears and um, with Aquarius about galactic energy. So again, you know, this is a very galactic chart, which I will pull apart again shortly. But, you know, again, you know, things can happen <laughs> that um, perhaps we don't feel ready for when we're working with the Korean energy. But again, it is all about pushing us forward to help us evolve. So the um, Aquarius is represented by the water bearer. Um, but it is not a water sign. Aquarius is fixed air. And the water bearer really is bringing sustenance, giving life, um, cleansing, refreshing, healing energy to the collective and sort of maybe pouring water on some of this fire to maybe put some of the fires out and try and calm and quell the drama that we may be experiencing at this time. And Aquarius has a message to share, which is um, effectively sort of, you know, these different ideas, these new ideas. So it is always worth listening to Aquarius when Aquarius is strong. The Aquarius ruler, um, Aquarius has two ruling planets. It has an ancient and a modern ruler. So, so you know, instantly, if you think about Aqu um, Uranus and, Aqu and Saturn as planets, their energies are completely different, which again, you know, goes in some, um, some way to explain how Aquarius is so unpredictable and, you know, it's hard to put in a box and define what Aquarian energy is because you've got this kind of Saturn, you know, responsibility, maturity and um, father time, karma, structure. And then you have Uranus, which is completely opposite, completely unpredictable, um, you know, breaking through, awakening, higher consciousness, left field, um, shocks, surprises, you know, it can be it can be quite crazy when Uranus is strong. So again, you know, there is this huge contradiction when we are working with Aquarius. But um, let's have a look and see if I can share the screen. And let's have a look at this full moon chart. So as you can see, I've set it for um Lunt for Bedford, which is one of the closest towns to me in the UK. And, you know, here we have got the sun at 27 degrees 15, opposing the moon. And, you know, instantly I have included on my chart layout and um, Vesta. And this is um, an asteroid that I've never actually spoken about before. But Vesta's proximity to the sun at the time of this full moon is really hard to ignore, especially when I explain some of the themes and energies and symbolism of Vesta. So you can see they are very, very close together, you know, um, the, well, yeah, only really um, a matter of minutes apart. And then, of course, we have Mercury in retrograde motion very close to. So we've got this nice little grouping of um, planets and energies in opposition to the moon. So Vesta 
is um, really in the chart, it represents our inner flame, our inner light. It is associated with the home and with the hearth and that sort of fire that burns, that keeps us warm, that keeps us safe. Um, but, you know, in a more sort of metaphysical or um, spiritual sense, it is about our guiding inner light that can never go out. And I've talked about this sort of theme in other videos and um, it represents how we are able to feel inspired and also um, it represents the light in the darkness so when all the lights go out and you know you may feel lost and disconnected you have this inner flame vesta sort of burning inside that you can turn into and towards in order to sort of um, be guided by that inner light. So vesta also represents your truth in this world. And it also represents the desire to thrive against the odds. So that just to me feels so beautiful, so apt, so telling at this time that we have the sun shining this bright light next to Vesta which in herself is a bright light a bright flame sort of that spark of spiritual awareness and trust and dedication to the self and to our to your own truth right next together and with Mercury there as well you know Mercury is the messenger Mercury in Leo is about connecting to the heart consciousness and um, to understanding things from the heart space so less in the head and um, but more coming into the heart and to what feels right and what your truth what the truth is that you know it to be and you know all of these sort of um this beautiful collection of planets is really shining a light on information on understanding and that sense of self that is really coming to the foreground because when we're working with leo it is about having the courage to shine to show up in exactly you know your own authentic true self to show yourself for who you are to be proud of who you are to sort of release and let go of any fear of sharing your gifts, sharing your truth and, and really, you know, being able to express what it is that makes you unique. Obviously, with Aquarius, you know, Aquarius is collective energy. But when we're working with this axis of Aquarius and Leo energy, it is about heart versus head coming into that middle ground, that middle point and um, where we can work with both. Because if we're too much in the head, we lose track of our emotions. If we're too much in the heart and emotional field, you know, we can um, almost start to lose our sense of reality. But this is really, you know, asking us to connect with our sovereign selves and to, you know, perhaps even more so at this time. And, you know, without going into any detail, I think you may be able to read between the lines here. But, you know, this full moon is really inviting us to stand up for and speak out for with Mercury what we believe in as individuals you know this is not a time to go along with the crowd especially if you don't agree with the narrative um you know and it almost feels like a test you know do you have the courage through leo to do that and it doesn't have to be you know aggressive it doesn't have to be um violent you know again it is just about standing in that space of who you are and having the confidence and the presence of self that can carry you through and really shining a light in any sort of dark areas that you may come across. And again, this is personal and collective. But I talked about the um, the number nine. You can see we've got obviously the 27, 27, 27 with this um, Vesta sun and moon. We also have Uranus is in the square to the sun and the moon. In fact, it's a T-square at 27 degrees of Taurus. And we also have, so that is the number nine. And then we have um, Venus at 18 degrees of Virgo is also a number nine. So, you know, there are a lot of nine energies coming through this chart. Now, the ruling planet, I'm going to go with the modern ruler. So the ruling planet, for this Aquarian full moon is Uranus and Uranus is in a very tight square 
very tight T-square to the Sun, the Moon, Mercury and Vesta. And so this is this is tension, but it is tension and sort of challenge in order to really push us to make take the next step. When there is a square, you know, it is very catalytic and squares are always about growth for our greatest good. They can make you square. This can be uncomfortable in the extreme. But, you know, there is that saying that, you know, from the universe, you know, I had to make you uncomfortable or you would never have moved that is very much the sentiment of a square and when we have you know uranus in in this square and uranus active in in any aspect uranus wants us to wake up uranus wants us to sort of take some action and to make some changes and to break through that which has become stuck and in fixed earth you know it is shaking things up from the core now this can mean you know events at a world level in terms of the earth and what she's doing but it is also you know shaking up our bodies our physical bodies and again, you know, we've had lots of lights, lots of solar flares, lots of um, sort of higher um, frequency activity, which is helping to do that. But, you know, ultimately, Uranus wants us to be free. And, you know, this, obviously, the full moon in Aquarius, you know, the theme is freedom, but it is freedom to be yourself as part of the collective and how do we do that? How do we navigate? How do we claim our sovereignty? claim and speak up the truth of who we are, express who we are in full courage, without fear, but for the good of the collective, for the greater good of humanity. And of course, whenever Uranus is active, there can be surprises. It's very electrical in nature. You know, so we may see more flares, more solar activity. You know, that is kind of a given at this time anyway. And um, but that may ramp up. And also things can come from left field, which, of course, is very Aquarian in itself. So this might be new information sort of coming to the to the core, to the fourth front you know that affects humanity because we are in Aquarius territory and um, new understandings a leap of higher consciousness you know again it we don't always know what it's likely to be or look like when Uranus is present but we just know that things are certainly changing and because this is a fixed um, T's square you know wh where there is change it is permanent change it's deep permanent change so um and when it happens that's it we can't go back effectively so what else have we got going on I've talked about Vesta and Mercury retrograde Mercury retrograde suggests that there may be information coming to light you know it might be a new understanding of who we are um, through this Mercury retrograde in Leo, an understanding of, you know, our own light and our own power and our own potential and how strong and courageous can we actually be. It is also about being seen and releasing the fear of being seen and expressing who we are in order to kind of fit in and make everybody else comfortable. So that's a really beautiful sort of energy to be working with. And um, we also have Let's look at what else is going on. Venus at 18 degrees of um, Virgo, sorry, is opposing Saturn at 17 degrees of Pisces. So and and <laughs> creating a lovely T-square with um, Mars and Jupiter who have just had their recent conjunction in Gemini so you know this is a mutable t-square so with two t-squares in this chart boy you know things are happening things are changing things are being pushed to their limit and something absolutely has to give so Venus in Virgo is very much about valuing our minds valuing the detail the information valuing how we can serve others and be in service and be useful and opposing Saturn in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces is potentially going to make things a little blurred and a little confused. You know, there can be illusion, there can even be trickery when Saturn is working through Pisces. So again, it's like come in to, you know, the discernment and choose what feels right for you with Venus opposing Saturn. But when we have this T-square as well, 
It's like, you know, Mars and Jupiter want to expand. They want to move forward. I did a video about this energy earlier in the week, whereas Saturn is sort of trying to impose some sort of pause and restriction and limitation potentially. But, you know, in, Sat in Pisces, Saturn isn't particularly strong and it's hard for Saturn to create and impose boundaries because Pisces just doesn't do boundaries, doesn't do structure, doesn't do restriction. So, again, you know, we're still working with this real energy of confusion, of not knowing what's right, what's wrong. You know, there is um, some element of calling to move into a more divisive, you know, choosing sides, making decisions, making choices, not knowing what's real not and what is not but you know um saturn in pisces is also very karmic so you know whatever is coming through at the time of this full moon there is a real karmic element to it and you know the feeling that we can't actually avoid this at this time it is part of the process it is what has been written in the star so to speak and you know it is part of our evolution and our path forward even when it does feel difficult it's about trusting that this is working out for the greatest good you know so where there is confusion where there is illusion where there is a bombardment of facts where you know you feel like you're moving forward but you're being held back you don't quite know what's going on and it can feel like everything is upside down and turned upside and you know left field and shake it all about you know again it's coming into the heart through the leo sun but also using your discernment through that venus in virgo now the um where have we we've got the sun at 27 is trine chiron and eris sitting together here in aries so again there's this beautiful flow here with this trine um sort of encouraging healing of the self healing of the identity sort of acknowledging that it is safe to be seen it is safe to stand up and sort of express who you are and not to have fear around that and again eris although these two um asteroids are retrograde there is this sense you know, the heiress is, you know, the fighter, the female warrior. She will not lie down and be silenced. She needs to be heard. She needs to be seen. She needs to be recognized. So again, you know, this is a really powerful but very supportive aspect. So ultimately, you know, this is all about breaking free of patterns, of conventions, of ideas, of anything or anyone that has made you feel small, that has made you want to hide away or feel that you have to hide away. Anything that has prevented you from sharing your gifts, from showing up and shining your own light and your true self and what it is that you have to share with the world. So, you know, this is really, really beautiful, beautiful um, energy for light workers and for anybody who has felt that sort of restriction. And also it is about having the courage to stand up and actually sort of say, um, you know, where you feel things aren't right. So I'm just going to show you the galactic chart now. This is from galactic um, astrochart.com website. So again, I have set the chart for the full moon and as you can see we have got lots and lots of galactic alignment so the biggest ones here are um with the um alphard conjunction to the sun opposition to the moon so alphard is also conjunct vesta alphard is going to be in a square sorry alphard is conjunct mercury there as well and you can see square uranus so this is a very active fixed star and I have done a really quite um, extended video about Alphard and its energy quite recently. So I recommend you go back and look at that. But, you know, Alphard is the water serpent. This is very much about um, serpent energy, snake energy, about shedding skins, very much linked to the divine feminine, to kundalini activations, to a raising of consciousness. And also because of the geography of Alphard and the fact that the, um, the constellation is very sort of drawn out in the shape of a water snake, Alphard sits in the middle on his or her own and so again this is about shining your light and standing up for who you are without that outside influence or without the outside conditioning or um, patterning or expectations it is about being you 
and and nobody else if that makes sense so you know this is really powerful powerful um fixed star energy to be working with at this full moon and you can see that the orb is really quite tight here so um yeah very very influential we also have the sun in trying to the galactic center again very very small orb here 0.04 um, so, you know, the galactic center is sending us information from a point of higher consciousness, sending us light codes, activations, wisdom, information to help us rise up and see things from a higher perspective to help us evolve, to help us ascend. So that is really, really beautiful. And we also have um, the square to the sun and the moon with Algol, which again, I have talked about in previous videos. But Algol for me is very much linked to the witch wound. And of course, when we're talking about shining our light and standing in our authenticity and releasing fear to be ourselves, you know, we are we are in many ways, releasing that witch wound, which has created this fear, which has created kind of the censorship of self due to fear of being persecuted, of being, you know, harmed, of being ostracized, of being rejected for sharing our gift. So again, you know, this is really, really beautiful. The fact that we have this square with Algol coming in. And of course, if we move further down, we can see that Uranus is in a very tight conjunction with Algol as well. So again, this is awakening up to the truth of who we are and no longer having that fear, which can create sort of us to be frozen in fear, again, which links back to Medusa. But again, I recommend you watch my video on the witch wound and Algol if you are interested in more of that because this is already a very long video we have the north node is conjunct alpha reticulum so again i don't have you know a huge amount of time to go into these um, alignments in depth but this is very much about energy of the future and helping us to focus on what it is that we need to do to evolve humanity as a race as a collective you know just in in the way that the beings in this star system have had to do the same. And in in many ways, they had to face um, some of their deepest shadow in order to be able to do that. And they were forced to face their deepest shadow to kind of catalyze um, the um, the transition that they were thought that they were required to make in order to survive. Just moving down, I mean, there is just so much to say about this chart, but we can see, you know, um, sorry, Regal is very yeah. active here in its conjunction with Jupiter. It is also still very close to Mars, although it doesn't show up here because the orb is larger than two degrees. But Regal also square Venus and square Saturn is about pushing forward through confusion. It is about having that information that perhaps shows us where we might have been subject to mind control. And again, this doesn't always have to be from an external outside influence. It can be um, limitations that we have put on ourselves to keep us feeling safe, to keep us feeling small. Um, so, you know, again, breaking through all these patterns and all these illusions and ideas that simply aren't true is very much Sort of part of what Regal is here to support us with doing. We have some beautiful energy coming through. Nihau, that's the beautiful Blu-ray planet, is very tightly conjunct Mars at the time of this full moon. And again, you know, this is bringing in this higher Blu-ray frequency energy to shine a light, to to motivate motivate us, to energize us, to help us move forward, to give us new understanding. We have some beautiful energy with Arcanar in the Eridanus constellation, which again sort of brings us back to the river and the flow and um, following the path and trusting that the path is going to be winding and it won't necessarily go in the direction that you think it's going to. But, you know, you cannot go off course and you'll always reach the destination, which, of course, is the ocean at the end of the river, which, you know, represents consciousness. It represents unity. It represents all that is and ultimately source energy and coming back to the truth and the understanding of who you are. 
We've talked about Shi'at um, in quite a few of these videos. This conjunction is still very much active and will continue to be because Neptune is such a small, moving, slow moving planet. And of course, Al Adfar and Lyra, Altair and Aquila, both very much activating Aqu Pluto in Aquarius at this time with the ongoing trine to the supergalactic center and the square to the Shapley, which again I've talked about in other videos. And then we have um, Chiron is opposing spiker or speaker um, in the Virgo constellation. And, you know, this energy is helping us to heal our wounds, to step into the healers that we are all destined to become and that we've all agreed to become by being here. And speaker is very much an energy of just being. It is very feminine energy. It is very still. It's about the pause, but it is about sort of stepping away from that active sort of, you know, in the head all the time and just coming into that heart space, that center, that stillness and just being who you are with no apology um, with no embarrassment and with no fear. And one other star, which it doesn't show up here because it is not used in the, in the galactic astro calculator, is one of the Phoenix stars, Anchor, and that is very um, tightly conjunct Saturn. So again, you know, beautiful karmic um, energy of Saturn in Pisces being activated by Anchor in the Phoenix constellation, you know, really makes us think of this... Um, sort of burning down the old to rebirth something new and some be something beautiful and having to stand in that flame in that fire perhaps face the heat but trusting that everything is going to work out and that you know something beautiful can come up from the ashes so again all about transformation rebirth which is very much in line with Alphard in Hydra as well with that serpent energy shedding skin to become a new version of the self so I think it's fair to say, you know, this is really, really, um, let me stop sharing if, if I can work out how to, yeah, um, really powerful full moon, so much to say, I have gone on so much longer than I normally do, and I've probably only just scratched the surface really of what is there. But it is, truly is an opportunity for us to let go of limitations, of patterns, of um, sort of beliefs, ideas and consciousness that has kept us playing small. It is about standing in sort of the fullness of who you are, but as part of the collective, you know, really embracing that Aquarian energy sort of not um, going along with the status quo in the knowledge that if we continue to do what we've always done, nothing changes. And this is a real time of change. You know, I don't think anyone can deny that. So I hope you have been able to follow this, how you found it useful, you resonate with what I have shared, you like the new approach with the um, sharing of the chart. And, you know, please do you know, like, um, sorry, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done. Feel free to comment and share your thoughts. And um, yeah, thank you as always for your support. You know, it is a real gift to me to be able to do this, to share my passion with people that I know are interested. Um, and yeah, I, I appreciate, um, you know, you being here. So thank you so much. Happy full moon. And um, yeah. Let's see how the landscape looks sort of over the next few weeks, because I think this is definitely um, kind of a real pivot point in um, in the shift. All right. Take care.